Hi, it's Steve. Today we'd like to show you how to change the rotation sensor on your top load washer. It's a really easy job. Let me show you how we do it. Now to do this repair, we will need to lay the washer on its back. So there's a couple of things we need to do. First off, we will take the lid to the washer closed because it is spring loaded and will want to pop open on you. So just use some duct tape and secure it in the closed position. We'll also need to disconnect power to the washer, so simply unplug it. And we'll also need to turn off the inlet water supplies, remove both hot and cold fill hoses. Now with the washer laying on its back, our next step will be to remove the rotor from the bottom of that washer. It's held in place with a large bolt that uses a quarter inch hex key socket. Now as you loosen that now you'll find that you may need to pull that rotor just slightly forward each time. If it binds up, just pull it a little bit and then continue to unthread that bolt. And then support that as we come to the end of the threads. Grasp it with both hands and then pull it away. Inside of that rotor is covered with magnets that want to grab onto these metal cores. So it might make it a little difficult pulling it off. Anyway, set that aside. Then next we need to remove four bolts that secure the stator to the bottom of the washer. So use a 3 8 socket to loosen those bolts. Once they're loose, you can use a 3 8 nut driver to remove them. Now next, we'll release this wire harness from the base of the tub. There's some little arrowhead fasteners that sit down into the base of the tub. So loosen all three of those and remove them. Now once we've removed all three of those, our next step will be to just depress the little arrowhead fastener on this one and push it. that housing until that's free. Now our next step will be to carefully remove that stator from the bottom of the tub. And just set that plate aside. So we'll carefully rotate that stator around. Remove that wire harness. There's a small connector attached to that sensor. It has a little locking tab. We'll need to depress that locking tab and pull the harness away. Then feed it out through that little notch. Now we can take that rotor at this point and we'll remove the sensor from the side of it. Now on the outside edges of this sensor you'll note there are two little plastic tabs that fit into notches on those two particular coils. So we'll take a flat blade screwdriver, just lift those tabs up gently while pulling the sensor away from the rotor. Do the same on both sides, then remove the old sensor and discard it. Now when installing the new sensor, you need to make sure that first of all we line it up on the proper coils. And you'll note that there are only two that have that little notch cut out in them. And also on the back side, there will be an arrow that will line up with an arrow on the sensor. So press that down and tight up against the circumference of that rotor. Just slide it down into these three notches. We'll line up.
They should bottom out on the little notches on the side of those coils and your two taps will lock into place. Now we're ready to reinstall that rotor assembly. The first thing we're going to do is to install this wire harness on the bottom side of it. You'll note that it's color coded, red, blue, yellow, to match the wires on that harness connector. Make sure that's firmly in place. And next we'll tuck that harness down into the little clip. That'll keep the harness on the inside of that one post. We'll reconnect the small harness connector, making sure that the locking tab engages. Now next we'll put that protective plate in place and this point here should be at about the 12 o'clock position centered over the bottom shaft. Now with that in place we can then lift our rotor up into position. We'll snap that one arrowhead fastener for the harness into the new sensor, position that over the shaft, now you may wish to have somebody hold that in place, let the retaining cover dropped off while removing that, you'll need to reinstall that you'll note that there is a notch with a little indentation on that metal plate that's going to line up with the tab on that rotor. So set that into position and then we'll reinstall the mounting screws. Just put them in loose at first to make sure that we don't bind that rotor. And then we'll tighten it with our socket. Place the holders for that harness in the inserts in the tub. And now we're ready to set the rotor back on top of that stator. The inside of that rotor has a splined portion on it that will line up with the spline on that drive shaft. Just line it up in any spot and then we'll tighten the retaining screw. Now once that bottoms out, we'll make sure we tighten it, just give it a tap with a soft hammer. And now we're ready to stand the washer back up. Now with the washer back in place, we're ready to reconnect our fill hoses, turn on the water, reconnect the power, and your repair is complete.